to uh, get this meeting going on December 8th. I had the reservation one minute before. So, uh, with that, we have an offer for an open prayer from my council. Yes. Um, Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, we ask for your blessings. We ask for open minds and open hearts in doing the important work that is in front of us. We also ask for blessings and grace and strength for those members in our community who are uh, hurting for the loss of loved ones. We ask that uh, you embrace them, put your arms around them and provide them strength as we enter the holiday season. We ask that all those who are suffering be made well and those that are cold and without food find uh, refuge in the kindness of others. Thank you. So, uh, attendance. Uh, we normally have someone read through the four attendance. I will try to do that. Uh, yes, Anna on the hands on. Um, yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear super well. I think we're talking about minutes, correct? Uh, we are taking attendance. Oh, gotcha. I apologize. Um, Clayton Matt. Here. Uh, Ken Pitt. Here. Roger Noble. Here. Teresa Wall McDonald. Here. Georgia Smees. Absent today. Okay. And do we have our, is there the BIA member there today? No. He's not present today. Not uh, here, I don't think online, but we have a quorum, so thank you. Thank you for that. I uh, just announced uh, meeting minutes on the DNRC and CSKT website. As usual, uh, all these minutes are, the minutes are, are basically through the recordings of the, uh, the Zoom, and uh, the minutes are, are available on the DNRC and CSKT website for anybody who wants to go back and look at previous meetings and of course this meeting uh, in the future. So we want to adopt the agenda uh, for board members. We need action to adopt the agenda when you're ready. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda as provided. No second. Motion by Roger, second by Ken to adopt the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Agenda adopted. Public comment for item not on the agenda. We have added this as an opportunity right up front to give any members of the public an opportunity to make a quick comment, but anything we may not have included on the agenda at this point. So anybody in the audience, which is the physical audience, which is to make a comment, please uh, come to the podium, such that it is, and uh, state your name, give us your comment. Do we have anybody online who wants to comment? Anybody online who wants to comment, please raise your hand or indicate so, and then we'll get you opened up. Do, do we have a number of people online? Uh, just two. Okay. Seeing none and hearing no comment, we'll move on. We'll have an opportunity for more public comment later on. All right, we need to approve minutes for November 17. Those of you who are here, uh, when you're ready, we'll take a motion to approve those minutes. If you want to have some comments or changes. I'll make a motion. Approved. Motion by Ken to approve the November 17 min min uh, meeting minutes. I'll second. Second by Roger. All in favor say aye. 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 Domestic allowance applications. Uh, Ethan or Kristen? Mr. Chairman, board members, I will speak on behalf of Christy today. She's um, unfortunately under the weather. Give her some well wishes. Look forward to getting her 
back with us. Uh, today for your consideration, there are two applications that were uh, reviewed by state and uh, tribal technical folks. There's nothing exceptional or out of the ordinary with these two particular applications. And as we have done in the past, this is a really just an opportunity for the board to make the authorization to move these forward. Mr. Corral's applications, we have two. And as usual, we've been including these in, in maps and we approve these uh, to the state the name and we'll have that on the record. So when you're ready, we'll these. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the two applications uh, for domestic allowance. The first, Strasser, Strasser, and Bra. And I apologize, I'm probably saying those wrong. That's and uh, Tilford, so authorization for both of those applications. Motion to approve both domestic allowance applications. Thank you, sir. All six. Second by Roger. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. aye. aye. Second by Kim. I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> you, know, I, I you know, I haven't gone for a month. I haven't gone for a month. Keep you straight, are you? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question by Roger. So, or is that Kim? Question. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for Ethan. So in the past two meetings, we've only had two of these. Is there just been a decrease in the amount of applications or? Uh, we did have a number of applications that needed letters of defect um, and that is real. And then additionally, uh, we have seen a decrease in uh, new applications as well. Um, and we, we do know that there's a number of people anxiously awaiting next steps uh, for processes that we're not currently handling under the shared or individual domestic allowances. And so uh, when we change those processes, I expect to see a little step up in application activity. Good, thank you. Okay, those are two. Moving on to 3.3 interim process for individual and shared domestic allowances. Termination. Ethan Mace. So let's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Ethan, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, <coughs> we just cut it as clearly as possible so we can try to move through this. Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman, I will uh, do my best and please do ask questions um, or point out uh, things I need to talk about in a little more detail as needed. Um, generally, and for this whole section 3.3, uh, what you have here in front of you is a very important transition. Uh, as you know, you have been serving to approve these domestic allowances. And um, 3.3 seeks to have the last two that you just approved be the last ones that you approved and instead uh, function more as the, the compact intended this board to do an oversight of the board instead of a direct application review and uh, an authority board. So uh, what do we have to do to, to get there? There's there's a couple of things um, that, are, that are important. We needed uh, some new forms for domestic allowances. And in this case, we're really talking about the uh, individual and shared domestic allowances. Um, and we have put off the development domestic allowances till uh, I believe that, that will be one of the high priority next, next steps. Um, so that's, that's on our radar. We've already started drafting a form for those. You will, you, we will engage with you after we, uh, to take care of some of this, uh, these other um, easier ones. Uh, so we've got two forms in front of you. Uh, there is um, also a memo that I have provided and memo uh, seeks to add in uh, some remedy of uh, our current process for uh, domestic allowances that does not, uh, we currently do not allow applicants to come in and file for a new domestic allowance um, using an existing well. 
uh, board members knew that that was um, something that needed to be addressed. And in fact, your interim form had in uh, red highlighted the uh, uh, statement that the, the Office of the Engineer and the board will come up with the process. And um, I have put forward a possible process for you to consider uh, either adopt it, modify it, or, uh, or shoot it down as the board so chooses. Then there's a, a small moment where we'll talk about uh, the transition authority of the older forms as they continue to come into our office. So I expect that we will see people filing on the older versions. And, uh, and at that phase, uh, assuming we, we uh, find some traction on the new form and the transition uh, to have these uh, processed directly out of our office instead of by the board members, that I will just take over that function, um, even though those older forms are written to the board. Um, I'm seeking from you today to clarify that I will act um, as a, through the office of the engineer to just take those even though they're written to the board and, um, and, and <clears throat> redirect them to the office of the engineer. So uh, with the board's permission, I'd like to start off talking about the engineer's memo. So what I've uh, attempted to do uh, with this memo, and this memo did uh, find review by legal counsel and uh, found review from some, uh, you know, from our technical team. And this memo takes care of a couple of known issues that are out there. Uh, some folks had wells for you know, small domestic uh, wells that they should have registered. Uh, during either uh, filing for them uh, to get a suspended water right through the Montana DNRC before the effective date of the compact or uh, use the 180 day filing period that was open after the effective date of the compact to come in and take those existing uses and, and make them uh, get an authorization to apply for uh, taking those unauthorized uses and getting a, an actual water right. Or through the, the language of the ordinance. Uh, currently, uh, this particular policy would allow folks that were in that situation to use those existing wells and come in and apply for a new domestic allowance. Um, and so this is different than the registration process. They would be applying for a new water right under the ordinance the requirements of the domestic allowances would pertain to these applications. So unlike a registration where an applicant of, uh, could come in and apply to register their existing up to 10 acre foot use that was defined by the state standards, this policy seeks to allow them to instead use their existing well and apply under the new domestic allowance standards. On uh, we get the pause right there. So on on that point, any questions from the board and Ethan? Uh, were there any outstanding legal or technical issues that came forward during the discussion that we need to discuss? Uh, we do not have any outstanding issues at this time, um, but I'm here to uh, serve <laughs> the board. And if you um, notify me of something, we that that would be a next phase. So the door's not closed. To remedy any things that you may uh, bring forward today. Yeah. Well, questions about the board? Well, I have a question. I guess it's why I understand the need for this, but are you seeing an influx of these kind of requests? Or what's driving what's driving this? Uh, sure, we are seeing an influx of these kinds of requests, and. Um, uh, a couple of things that we have done, we we tend to, um, when people come in or they file uh, for something on an existing use, we take their name down, which this was direction given from the board members in the past. 
We keep track of the issue that needed to be resolved. So we've got a spreadsheet of folks that we already know about that are out there and need resolution starting there. Second, uh, we've had opportunity to hear from um, some of the reservation citizens uh, during this um, objection period for the compact who are uh, concerned, uh, not sure what to do. They fall into this category where they, they didn't register their well and they are wondering, well, what do I have to do? Object to the, the compact proceeding through the water port or, uh, you know, and when they come in here, I um, have explained to them that board members will hear um, a policy that would potentially resolve their issues. Again, though, nothing in this policy allows them to get outside of the negotiated maximums and yard sizes or annual volumes or the flow rates that you would see in a regular domestic uh, allowance application. Hopefully that gets it. Uh, it's sort of a two-pronged answer to your question. Okay. Lisa, any questions? Um, I have a, just a question about the 60 DF Part B for all of the other farms include a filing fee, but this one does not. Why does this one not include a filing fee? Good attention to detail there. Um, the Standard application fee for an equivalent domestic allowance outside of the reservation is filed for under a state form 602. And the total filing fee for that type of uh, use is $125. Those happen to be notices of completion. Um, on the reservation, uh, we have some guiding language about our application fees that they should generally track what is done off of the reservation. We feel that the uh, domestic allowances are pretty equivalent to those form 602 exceptions to a permit. So we've, we've matched that filing fee. Um, a difference between the um, domestic allowances on the reservation is that they envision someone applying in advance to get permission to drill the well, um, and that they would generally suggest what their terms are so that they are aware of the, the maximum annual volumes and maximum allowable yard sizes and so forth in advance of doing the development. There was also a desire to have that so that folks would know that they needed to be mindful of putting their, uh, their wells uh, far enough away from septic and other potential contaminant sources, uh, you know, that, that kind of information, and that they would um, be following the appropriate um, well construction standards. Uh, so there was some debate, well, should we do half of the filing fee on the, on the permission form up front and half of it at the completion phase, which is what form B is. Form B, after you get the permission to drill the well, um, that just gives you permission to drill it well. It does not give you a water right or a finalized authorization. You have to come back after you put the well in, after you put the water to use, and then you have to show, I did actually follow through with everything that I had planned on Form A, or if you're going to modify it, make sure that the modifications are still within the overall parameters of a domestic authorization. Uh, we would allow some some shifting. If your yard is in a different spot or slightly different acreage, uh, we can accommodate that without um, uh, messing up any of the of, of the larger um, conditioning of the domestic allowance. So uh, that's why we have zero filing fee. We thought um, that it would probably be better to front load the application fee um, on Form A, and that if you pay the full fee, that allows you to go through the entire process. Filing form B is really just so you can get your water right. And that's the same as the interim process, isn't it? It's it is, yes, sir. Yep, and the, 
on the interim process. Yep, and uh, the, the board had agreed to that approach previously, if that helps. Um, thank you for that. It, the other reason I raise it is because the other farm is a completion farm and there's a hundred dollars and this is a completion farm. So it's a, it's a bit confusing, but thank you. I, uh, and a, thank you. It is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> and the other um, completion form, which is a little ahead of us on the agenda, um, talking about a substitute well, um, that doesn't have a part A. So it's, uh, that is an, it is a hundred percent a notice that is filed after they do a substitute well, which is why you see that notice of completion with the filing fee, but this other notice of completion without all. So, uh, just to revisit Roger's point, I put that in. Uh, the, yes, right. I, oh, uh, the, uh, the current interim process did not require a fee. Is that what? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the current interim process required a hundred and twenty-five dollar application fee for Form A and zero dollar fee for Form B. And that is the same that we see here in these form updates. So uh, we did charge uh, during the interim period for someone to be able to file an application with the office. I'll keep talking for a moment and uh, interrupt me uh, <laughs> if, if needed and as needed. Uh, the proposed policy um, does not just limit uh, an applicant to coming in and using an existing well if they have a completely unauthorized use. There, there is envisioned here opportunity for an applicant who has an authorized use of water to add to their existing authorization so long as they don't exceed in totality uh, the domestic <clears throat> uh, development maximums, uh, you know, in the total water right, volume, flow rate, et cetera. So let me give a, for instance, if you will, of why that would be useful. I have a house, I have an existing state-based 602, I had the fur an acre foot for my house. Um, my daughter would like to have a house on the same property, build her house. Boy, it'd be nice not to have to drill a whole new well and just be able to take run a line from this well over to that new house because uh, wells are expensive and uh, no need to, to double up the wells. An applicant currently doesn't really have a pathway forward to resolve that issue. If the board so chooses to adopt this policy, they would be able to come in and apply to add um, another house. That total use would still be well within, no pun intended, uh, well within the, uh, the maximums envisioned by the development of domestic allowances. And I do specifically have three people who are in that situation. So uh, that I do know of that would like to have opportunity to add one home for a family member onto their existing well and not have to drill a new well. They, they do call periodically to find out if, uh, if there's any process updates. Question. So perfect segue, Ethan. Um, I guess the question that begs itself then is you've got 3,000 plus applications out there sitting for review. How are we going to know that somebody's coming in and making an application isn't one of those 3,000 applications that haven't even been 
enter into the database. Right? So how are we going to avoid duplication or redundancy or, or that or that? Uh, currently, when we receive an application and that application goes through review, we are double checking uh, to see if they have either something. The ones that were filed for before the effective date are all on the online database held in a suspended status. And DRC has been gracious enough to provide us a lookup that they do on our behalf. Uh, for those that were received during the 180 day filing period after the effective date that we do not have, um, we do not otherwise have records, but we have, um, uh, thank you, thank you. And I'll point you to the back there. She is usually the one that runs the trap lines for us on that. Very uh, um, That is how we try to avoid those redundancies. But um, additionally, we think um, as we near, you know, the moment where this office will start to receive those registrations for processing, we expect that there may be more than a few situations where there is um, a registration that was filed for that cannot move forward for one reason or another. If we had a policy like this, we, we would potentially have a, a backup alternative um, you know, to maybe resolve their existing use if they had applied in a way that, you know, just simply couldn't make it through the registration process. Any other questions at this point? Just to one part of my brain is the so, uh, individual insured domestic loans form A permission to construct. Yes. Form B, the ones they've constructed come in, file it, fill it out, and then they get their loan. If they have followed, if, if they if they, the if they follow the rules, they're just going to get the water right. Yep. And then, so form A is got the B, form B is not because they've already. Okay. Hey. Yep. So, to touch on one of the items in the memo, exactly how does this apply to existing wells that are not that have not filed that you're talking about? Yes, we still require anybody with an existing well, this is what we envision, uh, to file for format. Okay. And they would um, offer the information at the form A filing that they have an existing well. They would give us the well log. They would give us information relating to that existing well. And we would still uh, perform a review similar to what we would do for a proposed well. It's still got to meet the, the standards for construction and placement um, and the, the proposed use. Um, so and the fee stands and the fee and you, get, you don't you don't get anywhere. We're not going to do any of that work, that preliminary work without receiving the fee. Uh, that helps to to fund the effort. Any So uh, then an additional question for me is, you know, we're starting transition from the interim process into a non-interim process, a full, full open process. So for these particular applications. For yes. these applications. Mm -hmm. So what are just maybe, I don't want to get too far afield here, but what's left to transition to, to be for the open? So at some point we're moving, we're moving in that direction. At some point we're going to be, well, I'm just not sure looking for action on that today, but maybe just to put the role in I understand and, and I'll do my best to answer you. Um, I, we have a, um, you know, another hiring process. I suspect there'll be at least one after that, that would lead us towards a staffing level that would, I believe, enable us to get 
the full um, outside of the full interim period, excuse me. Uh, additionally, there's around 14 or more water right types that um, need to be uh, moved forward. So like the substitute wells, stock water allowances, actual permits or new um, appropriations, changes in use, uh, geothermal heating and cooling um, application types. So we have a lot of those things that need to get sorted out before we'll get outside of this interim process. Additionally, um, our website will be very important uh, for us to be able to achieve what's needed. Um, and then not trying to, you know, make the list too hard, but we've got some uh, some work to do with registrations and the water rights database. Uh, so uh, the water rights database is um, still in the process of getting uh, enhanced, is the term that's usually used, um, enhanced uh, so that it would include the types of water rights this office uh, 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 works on excuse me okay. would it be um, I'm sort of asking and making a statement would it be helpful not today but maybe by the next meeting or should we have that open that data and think so that we can kind of follow along with you and you know where we're at at each stage right we can certainly try to get that road so and set up on the, the yeah. big list of things, of key items that need to be achieved to get us um, fully through this interim phase. I'm, I'm happy to provide that. Um, and, and one of the most fundamental parts of that will be a budget, which um, I know you want and I want as well. And, uh, and, and so that's thinking about it in terms of what we're talking about or something. Yep. It's a step back, so to give us a more Does that make sense? I can commit to to that flow chart. Uh, back to the proposed policy. Um, I I did take a moment in here to briefly touch on um, issues of. Uh, resource and economic impacts. I thought that it was important to acknowledge that uh, this policy does not, if anything, it reduces the number of uh, aquifer uh, points of potential pollution by enabling an applicant to use an existing well instead of uh, moving forward with uh, an applicant having to put in a new well. And since the use is equivalent, if this policy moved forward, um, the total uh, added net depletion to the resource would be the same, except that there would not be a separate new well using an existing well. So it seems a little obvious, but I felt like it was worth mentioning. Uh, additionally, um, the issue of fairness comes up quite a bit, and so I tried to preemptively bring up why this is different than a registration, and um, everybody says, well, if I came in and filed my registration, it seems unfair that you're going to let somebody come in and apply, you know, after the fact uh, to bring their existing well in compliance. And uh, my main response to that is that anybody who pursues this to remedy uh, a failure to register, file a registration, you're going to end up with a junior priority date as compared to the registration file. You're going to end up with uh, more uh, restrictions as compared to a registration file. Um, the burden is a little bit more as compared to uh, a registration filing. And, and so generally, I think that those, those reasons alone, probably they may just automatically resolve 
that. However, fairness is a subjective term, subjective thinking. That's that's where I'm opening, and that, that's where my door is. Is that uh, maybe it's enough to have the junior priority date, uh, more restrictions, um, so forth. Uh, maybe the board has a different thought about that. I'm here to facilitate any other any discussion of that as much as I can. Would uh, once we made a decision that we could be maybe an explanation of what this is and what we to add to our community that turns out the public information? Um, we can do that. The Q and A, which is the topic down that William is already about to go out. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. We can we can update that. Certainly. And this this document, um, in whatever final form it finds itself forward, will be part of our our record. So this discussion is public and will be posted on our uh, important documents. Um, uh, should the board find a way to find all this if they like. <clears throat> that said, I did um, write this with the guiding factor of what I've heard from board members in the past that there's a desire to bring people into compliance. This enhances the opportunity to bring people into compliance. Uh, this policy also, um, I, I do go in to kind of some detail discussing the specific language in the ordinance to do our best to uh, not misstep or circumvent any of the ordinance requirements. Uh, the ordinance does have some specific language that talks about um, filing before drilling a well and uh, it, it didn't explicitly um, contemplate the situation of using an existing well, but I also think that it doesn't explicitly prevent. Um, so for the, for the practical purposes, we're talking about for domestic allowance, Category well that probably were in existence even before the compact was approved in the most cases. That's I think I think that that would be the the lion's share of things, but it's it's always hard to forget these you know these things. But that would be my guess just because of the total wells that are out there, more of them existed before 2021 than exist after 2021. So uh, this really is geared towards those that were in existence before the event. And our ability to ascertain which is which is to get some of the data. Um, it's not uh, just relying on that data. There is a register of wells that are drilled in the state of Montana through the Groundwater Information Center. And um, those well logs, which don't include everything that's ever been drilled, but they certainly include a lot, um, will help to uh, um, ascertain the exact date that the wells were attended. And we seek those uh, for applicants who have an existing well. More comments or questions for Ethan? So we're set up here to take action to approve your recommendation. Uh, do you have anything else to add at this point on his memo and his forms? Uh, not at this time. I, uh, I, I, I do, I, I know there's a lot of things under this one action item and if the board wanted to you know, separate them a little bit, I'm sure that, that is, is feasible. But uh, for me, I do need some guidance on like, both the policy, the the new forms, because they're sort of intertwined. You have to write the form in a way that allows um, for the use of those existing wells. We couldn't 
couldn't separate those two things, uh, which is why you see it all bundled. And also, I do need the, the board to give direction about those older forms that will come in. Um, and... Tracy. Yes. Um, I think it's I understand that um, we have not acted on the existing well memo yet, nor the forms, but I'm, um, I'm concerned about just a comment about when they are adopted, that is there a way to, uh, with each form and with the memo, put a date and time of approval and then can we have some sort of section on our policy memos at the bottom, approval date, and then review date. And then if these forms are uh, embedded with the process on the memo, that we somehow link those two together so that there's a really clear record of when we approved them, what forms we approved with the dates so that we can kind of track it. And then at some point in the future, we might have a modification date. So I'm just asking that it kind of be tied together in a nice little bow at the end when, if, if the board takes that action so we can always track when it was approved, what forms it included, a review date, and maybe a modified date for some time in the future. I think that might make it easier. Well, Teresa, I, what I hear you saying is if we take action today just to package it up in a form that documents it uh, so that it's clear uh, exactly what we do. Yes. Uh, even, uh, what the conditions are. Yes, so that it kind of so, lays so together. You're not intending. You're not intending that if we that we have to have that today. No, sir. Okay. No, that that with the approval we could ask that it be organized. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah, Chairman, board members, we certainly um, had planned to add a date um, once this shifted from uh, a draft to an official. Um, except, so the the form will have a date on there um, and. We've been trying to put those dates on the forms. Your interim forms had a had a date on there. Um, and so, for for what it's worth, if we could, uh, um, I'll encourage the the board to to know that that date will be on there. That this policy decision, if you should make one today um, and approve these forms, that that will also go into that ongoing policy document we will also uh, collect that in the minutes and when those change from a, a draft to a final so we'll have at least three um, points of uh, you know of record keeping about the decision and um, also it, it's always got to be a little bit assumed that any form that is used is approved by the board. And there is a specific section of the ordinance that not only is the board uh, required to vote on any modifications to forms, but it needs to be a unanimous vote. So if you take an action on any of the forms before you today, if that is not a unanimous uh, uh, vote, then you know those forms are not going to move forward. If it's a, a, a majority say uh, yes. three year one then we're not moving forward with the forms. Yes. No question. All right. So I think you've done a pretty good job of packaging this uh, evening for the most part. I guess the only um, um I'm sorry to interrupt. Um Maya's had her hand up for a while. I just want to make sure we don't overlook her comment. Quite fully understand what we're saying. We have a comment from Maya. Uh, why don't you go ahead and She's the yourself? hydrologist with the Monterey DNR Center who has been helping with the technical review of the uh, applications. All right, feel free, ma'am. Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, there was just one thing I just noticed in reviewing these forms. I've been working with Ethan and the uh, entire staff. They've been working super diligently on getting all of these ready for you all. Um, there's just one thing which is when we're discussing the existing uses, um, 
I'm looking at the instructions. So that's page four of six. Um, and what I'm realizing is I'm not sure if it's clear. Um, so it specifies, did you put your water to use before the effective date, September 17th, 2021? And it kind of lines those out. So for either you file with the NRC, you're a tribal member or a Latte, or you did not file. Um, but then it goes into other questions. Um, and so my concern there is just that we make sure to specify that if you drilled after the effective date, you have to, um, like after the effective date, there's the process of form A and then form B, and you have to file both before you drill. And by putting in the existing um, wells, we just kind of need to specify in that part of the instruction, we are making it clear that if you're after September 17th, 2021, um, and before the current date, you cannot drill your well before you file part A, unlike with existing uses that you can drill before filing part A. Does that make sense? Or did I lose uh, everyone? It it does, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, and board members. There is uh, we we can add some specificity to that, but you also have to factor in that the the board had offered a grace period um, that extended from the effective date forward until I believe it was June first. Uh, that following about May thirty first. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, if we needed to do any additional um, details in there, it, it's not a hard line on September 17th, but uh... <clears throat> well, the other thing with that though is it's, it's the priority date is the key thing, so it's going to get a priority date, whatever date it comes in. So we're already going to be junior to anything else. Sure, I think my concern is that we make sure we are clearly communicating to people that they must file form A before drilling, because when you add the existing uses and you can drill before filing part A, it just makes it a little more complicated. And I wouldn't want the impression that the general public got to be, we can drill first, file later. That's That was the point I'm trying to make. That is good. I do um, redirect to the first page of the form under the giant important word, and uh, there's an underlined uh, approval must be received before drilling wells or developing springs. I, I feel like that gets us, um, gets us in there. You know, they're at least gonna ask. Uh, uh, Ken. Yeah, you were, I saw. And no, I was pointing to Taylor, but she has a Okay, so um, Maya, thank you, Ethan. Um, Not 100% clear on what that was. Myself. Okay. Now, uh, let, me, let me tell you what I think. In my, um, what in this would give a water, potential water user, the belief that they could drill before applying? Um, I think it's because there's the, there's a little bit of a gap in terms of the first page, which does indeed specify you must apply before drilling a well or developing a spring. But then comparing that to the first page of the instructions, um, there is the option of, did you already put your water to use? So it kind of begs the question, well, on one hand, it's saying, I need to file part A before I drill. And on the other hand, and then it goes back later in the instructions and says, oh, but it's okay if I already put my water to use to use this form. So I think just clarifying that if you are after September 17th, 2021, you have to, you have to file first. And I, I recognize there's a grace period, but I think 
just making it clear so we do have people filing Part A first. There's just a little bit of confusion between those two um, sets of language. So wanting to be clear between the form and the instruction is, is good. Um, so we can pause, Ethan, is there uh, something, if, if you're looking for action today, what, what can we do to clarify this so that otherwise we would want to, I think, uh, let you take the time to talk it over um, with your staff and, and then prepare this for action at the next meeting. I don't want to have uh, to do that, but if that's, if that's your, your thought, between you and Maya, what, what would we recommend at this point? So, Mr. Chair, um, if I may make a suggestion, I think what you could do is just, we could just add in under the qualifying questions, um, since it says, did you put your water to use before September 17th, 2021? Um, so there's the if yes, and then it's if not proceed to existing questions. I think you can add a line in there, which says, if not, you must receive, um, you must file part A before drilling or something to that nature. Um, so then it's, it is kind of, demarcating those two. I'm not saying that we should completely put this on hold, but I think just adding that as a clarification might be helpful, um, especially given the first page says you have to file before drilling, but there are some exceptions to that. Well, no, there, there's no exceptions. Mm -hmm. If you're going to drill, you got to file form A. If you have an existing well, you're not going to drill. That that existing well already exists, so uh, you're not circumventing um, the instructions uh, because it's not being drilled. All of those will already exist. But um, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members, I am happy to. We can add a, a line of clarification. I would like to not let this single item hold up this um, this project. If the, if the board has other issues, that would be uh, something different. But uh, we can we can add in uh, one line for clarification here in the instructions. Which keep in mind, the instructions are not exactly the most uh, formative part of this application. Um, so, uh, but, uh, well, I would, uh, thinking about this in two parts, one is if we take the action with the uh, intent that that language wouldn't be added, that we would want to see that and review that and make sure that that's clear by the next meeting, even if we do it, but we would be uh, today um, with regard to the rest of the board's concerns, let's open it up and see if there are any more questions about the board and uh, talk about it. Is that <clears throat> adequate way to go? Here? Mr. Chairman, um, I think since it's a minor modification of instruction under the form, I think um, my preference would be to see it, you know, vote on it with <clears throat> adding, allow engineer to add that clarification. Okay. Anything else, Robert? Yeah, I just <clears throat> so I, uh, I'm going to go back to I think you've done a good job. Uh, and I think some of the issues that Maya brought up are going to come out based on what well access. So that's going to be on face value anyway. So I don't see that that's a showstopper. Um, my thought though was typically I know other regulatory agencies, once they develop a new form, that form becomes what is used. And I think you mentioned earlier that you were going to still allow interim forms to be used. So I guess I would prefer if we adopt this form, then that's the form that gets used. That's the form that's on the websites. 
Um, if somebody brings in an interim form, they just have to fill out a new form because then it just it's gonna it's gonna resolve some of the confusion that goes on. I I can certainly we can make that happen. Um, and so long as in this clarification, we realize that the form B will be that will need to be redirected to the engineer. Um, so there would there would be this list of almost everything that you have um, authorized for form A. As long as it's okay to now put this updated form B in, and although they've got the, the form A authorization from the board, I, I would like the board to support us moving that form B authorization to the engineer. It, and I think that that does both what you want and probably what I'm after yeah. also, so that I, I don't have to come <clears throat> in front of the board when somebody has a form B completed that the board authorized. The deal. Uh, so we can, uh, I will absolutely happy to just redirect everybody's filing if they put it in on the wrong form, insist that it come in on the, on the correct form. Would, would there be much volume? There, there, uh, the, the wild card in that is perhaps those that have, uh, are in the middle of letter of defect. Well, again, so, scenario, right? So, um, uh, and again, I think I, I think we take that reasonable approach. Any new applications coming in, we can push them into this updated form. But uh, when we have something that we wrote a letter of defect based on a form that's got a date stamp, um, maybe maybe we have to like we let those come forward. Well, yeah, I said once we approve this, form, yep. then that's the one that's going to be used. So well, anything that's yeah, in there is going to get processed because it is being handled. That's cheap. So we're close to one to action list. I'm I'm ready. Okay. So now, before we I, do that, we we'll just had one question. Yeah, go ahead because it's a comment about the public comment. Yes. Um, in regard to this uh, policy clarification and the forms, which I support, I think it moves us forward. I, just a process question: um, Are these types of policy clarifications reviewed by legal counsel? Oh, I think you mentioned, uh, well, Ethan, you. you can respond, but I thought I heard you say that these were, this was all, all underwent full technical interview. That is correct. And uh, our legal counsel is on the on the line there. Haley, would you, uh, do you have anything to add? Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair, fellow members of the board and Ethan. Uh, at, at this time, I, I think what's already been commented on um, are things that we had raised um, in our comments as well, um, provided back to Ethan. So uh, we're happy to field other comments as well and talk with Ethan more in, Ethan in more depth um, to get this thing finalized. So I did uh, accept almost wholesale all of the legal's suggested changes. So uh, what you see before you has gone through that editorial uh, process. My uh, question in public comment is if we take action now, are we giving the public adequate time to look at this and comment? Because this is just being presented to us and we're prepared for action. So do we, right. do so we need additional time for public comment? Mr. Chairman, board members, this um, information has been posted for the required 48 hours. Okay. Uh, I also happen to think that this uh, particular policy and these forum updates are fairly consistent with what the ordinance itself uh, envisions. So I, I don't think that it, anything that you're having to consider here in front of you is um, particularly outside of, uh, of the norm or 
potentially impactful to the some water users out there in a way that would require perhaps a longer um, uh, noticing requirement. And I, I do have a list of things that I do believe meet those uh, longer noticing requirements, but this is um, something I think is quite a bit less. That's, that's, I didn't want to be sure that the long record being clear about what the um, opportunity was and it is. So I appreciate that. Um, small clarification, the board will still need to receive public comment. I'm going to do oh, yes, sir. All right. I'm talking about the fact that you had a public for some period of time for this meeting. Yes. For the public to see. So that was published at, on both the Montana DNRC's website and the CSKT website. Okay. So uh, as we have been doing. So uh, based yes. on all of this, any more comments from the board no. at this point? So would you want us to approve these individually, individual actions, or would you want us to approve the memo with the forms in one action? Mr. Chairman, board members, I believe if you approve the memo, forms A and forms B, um, with the clarification that we will add a line to form A instructions to help address the uh, uh, well drilling date issue. And that, um, and we modify 3.3.4 to instead of, uh, just to just to, to recognize that foregoing all forms will need to be on the new approved form and that that new approved form will also have a date as requested. It was together. <clears throat> In other words, together. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So board, are you ready for public comment? It's okay. We'll take public comment. Anybody in the audience have any public comment on the subject we've been discussing here? The uh, memo on the forms? Anybody online who may have a public comment, please raise your hand. If anyone online wants to make a public comment, raise your hand and I'll make it able for you to speak. I'm not seeing any public comments. Okay. So, uh, make a motion by a member of the board. And so I think we're looking for something that is uh, proved the, the memo form A and B with uh, additional language on the drilling date and uh, dates on the new forms. I'll make a motion to approve forms A with a clarification about drilling dates, form B, and the um, existing well memorandum for the engineer. And uh, based on the new forms, yes, okay. Teresa, yes, I would second that motion. And did we we picked up that uh, all of the interim farms will transition to the new farms? I intended to do that later, okay. It's part of the second. agenda. Motion by Kim, the second by Teresa. So, did we voice? Votes of um, Ken? Aye. Teresa? Aye. Roger? Aye. 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 So all approved. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Moving on to 3.4 interim process for substitute well notification of completion. Chairman, board members, in front of you, we have another form. Uh, this is a form that existed in an interim uh, state as well. And uh, we would like to move the substitute well notice of completion form into a non interim state, which means that folks will. 
be redirecting their applications to the optical engineer. Uh, this form, what this form does is if you have a water right based on a well and your well is fake and you need to drill a new well, you can go out and drill a new well and so long as it's in the same source aquifer and used for the same service as your existing authorized use, you can do that in advance and file a notice of completion with this office. <coughs> that does require uh, the drilling of a new well, which creates a new well log. And we ask that the applicant provide us with the original well log, and more importantly, the old well that is being replaced needs to be abandoned. There are procedures um, in the Montel Montana Well Drillers guidelines for abandoning old unused well, and there is a log, a well log that is uh, created when that occurs. Uh, a substitute well, again, is not an expansion or a redundant well to successfully get this particular type of application. You need to abandon your old well. This is for when your well does not work and you need to do it. And oftentimes when people are in that situation, they're in a hurry to fix that situation. So that's part of why you see a, um, a notice of completion. And, uh, and again, since we don't have a Form A in this uh, arrangement, we have an application fee because this is the only uh, form that we'll see over here. I, uh, I did find out uh, last minute that we need to make one small modification to this form. It is, um, it's, it's fairly minor, but it somehow got dropped off of, uh, of the effort, but um, I, 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 if the board so chooses to approve this form, I'm going to want to add um, in the important section on the front an item five or B uh, in the room Roman numeral list, and and that that the applicant must file this within sixty days after a substitute well is completed and delivering water. And uh, apologies that that was overlooked. Fairly easy to remedy. I will also acknowledge on this form that should the board decide to approve this form today, we will put a date on the form header. We will also uh, add the approval to the policy list that we have ongoing. It will be reported in the minutes. Um, try, trying to learn here. So, too well. Notice of completion, comments, questions. Was this also reviewed by legal? Uh, this was in the packet provided uh, to legal, and I uh, did not specifically reach out to them to uh, to do much on this, keeping in mind that it is largely uh, a, a redo of the existing interim substitute well form that has already been out and in operation. Question. What do they do if uh, it's after 60 days? Uh, well, there noble. You may remember this is a little bit like Groundhog Day, but we, we did have quite a discussion about the ordinance's very onerous uh, results if an applicant fails to file within 60 days. Uh, they, in that situation, they would actually instead have to file for a change 
of uh, water, right? Which is very difficult <laughs> compared to file this form and pay $100 and you're done. Um, we did get legal um, opinion about the engineer's option to extend that 60 day deadline and uh, that option is supported in the ordinance language so long as the applicant can make a case of why they have not appropriately filed within the 60 days. Regarding uh, just the fact that it's a substitute or what, just remind us what technical work do you do to confirm they're in the situation they're in? Mr. Chairman, we really look at the old well log, the depth of the old well as compared to the depth of the new well. Uh, we generally look to see if there's any um, additions that are noticeable uh, through the air photos on the on the parcel. So if, if it seems like maybe they're using this to expand use, we look at the uh, pump and casing information uh, if needed. And mostly the casing, anytime a casing shifts to a larger diameter, I, I might want to have some, some more detailed interaction with an applicant because a larger diameter casing is typically used for larger uh, flow rates to be used. And do we verify that the well is actually done that and determine that it is no longer? Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, we in fact assume that if an applicant is going to abandon an old well, which we do require that they abandon, it's grouting the old well, okay, that if they're going to go to that effort, something is wrong. I That that to me is justification enough. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to go out and really test the well. I, I, I do um, offer my technical understanding of wells and things that an applicant might try before going to the, the more involved process, the more expensive process of drilling a brand new well. Um, so uh, we, we try to help folks troubleshoot and we can, but usually by the time somebody is, uh, is putting in a whole new well, it's, they, we know it is bad and again, Required to abandon the old wall. No questions. How do you document that they abandoned it? I'm sorry. It, there's a lot going on here today, uh, but there is a formal process through the Groundwater Information Center in which a well driller uh, who is licensed in the state of Montana, when they abandon a well, they file a paper also at that. Um, and so that is information not provided by the applicant, but rather provided by a licensed well driller. Most of these are installed and, and or uh, abandoned by licensed well drillers. They're in Montana. You do have the opportunity to drill your own well uh, for your own house, but not for, um, for payment from other people. So there could be a situation. And in that situation, if I was to find out that a, uh, a landowner was doing their own well, I would do a little more diligent work to ensure that the casing standards and other construction standards uh, that are required um, uh, in the ordinance were adhered to. Thank you. Um, put just a little finer point on this. So, uh, looking at this as a substitute well, we, are we absolutely confirming that they actually had a well for the diamonds? Yes, yes. The, um, and that it was theirs? Yes. Uh, so possessory interest, um, the declaration language at the end of this um, is similar to what you would see on an application for a new water right. If anything, actually what we see more of in our office is that people file for a new uh, domestic allowance when they really should have pursued a substitute well. And that that has been the more consistent error that we see uh, as opposed to somebody trying to get a, uh, a substitute well um, for something that doesn't have a, a, a water.
water right. But again, if somebody did file for a substitute well for uh, something that didn't have a water right, we might be able to uh, help use the earlier policy to find a compliance solution uh, because you, uh, you, you've helped that along. So. But we would be looking for uh, when we get their action to uh, transition authority to the internal reforms of the office of engineer, uh, update application form 634F, uh, add item D to the front page. Is that correct? That's what we're for? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, public comment before we take action. Any public comment from the audience here? On the substitute well notice of completion form of the respective of this pack. Is, is there anyone online that's a public comment? Uh, Mr. Sorry, uh, James. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I only see a DNRC staff member online. We don't have any public. Okay. No public comment online. I think they jumping up here in the audience. So thank you. So I'll need a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I'll attempt this if Roger needs me a little. <laughs> yes, that, um, Mr. Chairman, I would offer a motion to approve the 634 at updated application form for substitute well notice of completions. And include the adding item by Including uh, Ethan's additions to the front page and the, this action would end the interim process for substitute well notice of completion. Motion by Teresa. Second. Second by Roger. All in favor. Ten. Um, discussion first. We limited this motion just to 634F. I was under the impression we were going to include the um, other two forms. Other two forms. Uh, Teresa, would you like to amend your motion? Yes. So I would uh, amend the motion to include form 634F. Uh, 60 DF part A and 60 DF part B, and that that is included in the action to end the interim process and move to these. The motion by Teresa, uh, or second. Second by Kennedy Kennedy. So we'll go down one ten. Aye. Teresa? Aye. Motion? Yes. Number yes. All approved. A four memo on legal communication guidance. Mr. Chairman, board members, you may be sick of hearing from me, but on. <laughs> uh, you had directed me, and uh, also uh, legal counsel had requested that we have a clarification about uh, communications point of contact, that type of, um, of information uh, that helps uh, guide our legal services. So I drafted this, I was able to get uh, Vice Chairman Pitt's uh, comments on it, uh, thinking that that was probably a pretty sensible spot to make sure that I'm not too far off of what the board had desires to have happen with this legal communication guidance. Uh, then legal counsel got it a little bit uh, late because we had to get it posted. So they did not have um, opportunity to help sculpt the document in advance. Uh, they did provide uh, some comments that I've printed off for you. Uh, to help 
perhaps uh, facilitate a discussion that I assume may happen between the board and legal counsel about this particular memo. That said, I'll just give you a quick overview of, of the memo. Uh, the memo really points communications towards uh, your engineer serving as the primary point and the uh, board chair serving as a secondary point in a situation where uh, legal counsel is advising um, either uh, personnel issues or appeal issues that I should not be uh, part of, then the primary point of contact shifts to board chair. Similarly, if there are issues involving the board chair, um, the board has opportunity through majority vote to assign uh, primary and secondary um, points of contact. The memo seeks to um, clarify that billing will be routed through the Office of the Engineer and, um, and that communications about billing and um, overages it will be sent directly to me. Additionally, there's a small bit about workload tracking, uh, assigning me to do that. There's not ever any point here that the board has any loss of control over um, legal assignments or workload priority as the board tells the engineer what to do. Um, this is really just clarification for organizational sake. Um, it's a small bit about attendance at meetings and other billable venues that I have requested to be made aware of so that I can help with our budgeting and, and tracking of the budget, which is something that is uh, specifically assigned to me in the ordinance. And um, I did take a consideration at embracing some advice from the open meetings trainer who suggested that for items of legal memos and such that those be written in a blind copy fashion to the board members to avoid accidental reply to all situations. Um, which we learned about is something to be avoided as that is an unnoticed public meeting if uh, there's deliberations happening. I don't think that was a very popular um, you know, idea from the legal counsel didn't like that as much and uh, I'll let them speak to that. But I, I recognize that we may need to change that repeated. Uh, that said, this is your draft, and this is something that the board will sign off on. Both the, the chair and the vice chair uh, would sign it if the board uh, chose to enact this. So this is your this is your memo, this is your action, this is your clarification. Anything that is written in here that you do not like, you should change it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I also had concerns on that last paragraph uh, with the blind policy directives. I mean, under you know Montana laws, we're supposed to be encouraging the public to comment, but telling them how we're going to hide stuff from them. So, or it's just uncomfortable. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I can't quite hear you. The comments are initial here. Okay, Jeff, I'm assuming is following. Uh, yeah, and, and um, if Haley, if you're available, um, uh, maybe perhaps you might talk through any issues that you wanted to uh, discuss. Certainly, uh, Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the board. Uh, actually, in, in agreement with what um, with what board member Pitt just stated, um, that was the reasoning for our comment towards the end of the memo. 
Um, you are correct, Mr. Chairman, that HF represents my initials um, and then JT represents um, John's initials. Um, those are just comments through track changes that we made because uh, we were uh, had a short amount of time to review this, um, but wanted to make sure we provided some sort of commentary. Um, I think I think our biggest points of review are just that again, in line with um, board member Pitt's comment that the board needs to exude transparency, um, as well as um, with this document that we just hope that the board is informed of the communications between council and the engineer um, and that they approve the lines of communication. Um, but those are the comments that were essentially addressed uh, by us earlier today. Mr. Chair and board members, uh, just as a moment to talk about the last section on um, on blind copying, uh, just to, to clarify, there's not any uh, limitation of transparency in the blind copying of the board members. What happens in an email chain when you send an email, uh, and I, if I was to send you board members an email and I put all the board members name addresses in the blind copy section, if you were to do reply all, it will only reply to those in the two or those in the CC realm. So it doesn't avoid or, or circumvent any um, uh, openness or transparency. It does avoid accidental deliberations outside of an open meeting about the content of draft documents. Again, we can take it out, but that's to better explain uh, the rationale. It doesn't keep any board member from commenting uh, directly to the legal counsel or directly to the engineer. Um, it doesn't um, circumvent board discussion in an open notice meeting. It, what it does do is it just eliminates the chance that there will be email communications back and forth about substantive documents that really need to be done in a public forum. Mr. Engineer, I think I think your concern has merit, but I think it'd be worded differently to actually portray because this is kind of jumps out at you. Uh, certainly, uh, we we can we can either modify it or eliminate it again. <laughs> this is this is your your memo. I, uh, so I, we need to we need to get some language uh, that the board appreciates. I think what what um, John suggested, legal counsel, that's good language. Yeah. The policy is that board members do not reply to that and only respond directly to legal counsel with CC the engineer. Yep, yeah, that that does it. Yeah. Yep. And again, I, you know, I, I think if we had given the legal counsel a little decent chance to give me those comments in advance. Um, I would have probably just accepted that and you'd see it in front of you, but we, uh, we have a lot of uh, items on the docket today. So uh, uh, this one was something that I knew you wanted. I wanted to at least get it, get it out in front of you. Uh, if the board was to choose to move this forward, you could clarify that we would just substitute that paragraph of the language provided uh, by legal counsel. Mm -hmm. How urgent is it that we include this? It's, it doesn't yeah. board members. How urgent is this to include this? Okay, maybe we need some time to, to we'll continue to look at this to give people a chance to find the big graph and the final graph for approval. I mean, I'm frankly a little hesitant to, to try to approve something based on. This was the comments the way they are. I'd like to see the final draft myself, but that's just me. Yeah, no, I was I was under the same frame of mind that you know I'd like to see these comments incorporated into another draft version. <laughs> and we review because I don't I don't see where there's that big of a difference today. Yeah, it's a quick Mr. Chairman. There might be a question for the engineer. Yeah. How urgent is this? Uh, board members, uh, I, th I think that 
I'm really trying to respond to your requests previously. I um, frankly, we've been practically tracking this operation, and I, I don't, I don't think that there's some kind of uh, real pressing need. I, I do believe that we've all kind of coalesced around a way to do business that is sensible, and so the, any delay on this particular document is, I don't, I don't think, uh, any kind of a big deal, really. Okay. Sure. Yes, I do appreciate the reference to workload tracking, and I hope that just occurs monthly, uh, that you uh, have frequent access to updates of projects, priority of work and level of project completion and expenditure. Um, and at some point, I would hope that the board could see that that report, but I appreciated that that was part of this. Okay. Um, is Haley, Haley and Donna, is they both on or is Haley? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay. So you have this draft I think we've seen the comments. So is there any, if, if the board, I, I don't know that we'll take action today, but just a question, if uh, if we redraft this incorporating all of those comments, if that's what the board approved at this point, is there anything about this memo that you would like to comment on to the board? Anything that, that, that seems like we should do something different or would this, be a good place to start. I think we can always change how we communicate with your office. But um, where do you sit with this? I, I see your comments, but I just want to hear your overview of how you're feeling when you're thinking about this process. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the board, uh, if these changes were to be incorporated in the document, uh, that would cover everything that we had flagged um, from reading it. And uh, we would just request seeing a final document um, before the next board meeting, um, just, to, just to review it um, for readability. Um, but everything substantively that, that we are requesting to change has been commented on. Um, and, and it's what's before the, the board today. Um, but yes, Ethan is correct. This, this did come up in our working session um, as a way to essentially have staff, um, other members of the Office of the Engineer, uh, members of the board, uh, field any questions to legal counsel and how to streamline that process. So that was the origin of this document. Um, and we, we, did, we have implemented certain functions of this document as well, including the um, synopsis of what legal counsel is doing um, for the board and the order of priority as well. Okay. Board members, what's your way? Hold up. Hold up to next. Yes. I mean, you you want to not table this, you want to see a final draft. Yes. Yes. Here? Okay. Teresa? Sure. Okay. So before we, so we'll do that, but before we, uh, do that. So I want to focus on under communications memo, paragraph one and paragraph two. Could you just kind of read through it and tell me in your mind, what does it mean? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, really what we need to um, kind of establish is that you have one centralized, you know, organized approach to legal services, uh, some continuity. And um, additionally, the uh, board needs to establish some mechanism of oversight. So what this means to me is that for the vast majority of communications that happen, uh, they'll be between your executive and your legal counsel copying the board chair. So you've got uh, the, your main hub of organizing the work as your executive out there working, again, at your direction, as are all of the things that I do, uh, working to you know 
prioritize uh, legal review of, um, of moving projects. Um, you're using my full time hourly commitment to this uh, project to help help get all those uh, those parts organized. Yet you will have knowledge that you're going to be copied on everything but the um, ministerial parts um, of the effort. So that if if it was determined by the chair um, that either some other board member ought to be involved or that a different direction needed to occur, you'd have you have access to all those communications. And by the way, um, I didn't mention this during our discussion about the existing Wells memo, but um, I did ask our council to um, provide a clutch review of of that effort, and they certainly were very responsive, and I was appreciative of that. So, um, just throwing that out there. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, one last question. Yeah. So this memo doesn't preclude the chair from going directly to legal counsel if it's so needed. No. Okay. no. Thank you. All right. So we will. And we, you can make a note to add that in there. If it, again, your memo. Uh, this is me drafting on on your behalf to try to get um, you know get something out there. <laughs> I do. I don't think it needs it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So we will look forward to the final draft. And would you like me to provide the next step in the drafting? Yeah. Okay. Please. I will. I will give you the next updated draft. Thank you. Okay. Board slash office website. Dot dot extension application. Chairman and board members, sorry for that. Not this one. Um, I have uh, done quite a bit of research um, and looking about what's needed for the next step in uh, in organizing our electric electronic footprint and uh, structure and designating us as a government instrumentality. And I've um, I've interacted with the folks that receive. And process the applications for a .gov domain, and I uh, I am armed now with our memo on what the board is, what the office of the engineer is. I have um, excellent um, additional information uh, needed for filling out the application. Um, what I would like from the board today is you to give me permission to proceed with applying on our behalf, my office, your board, uh, on our behalf of uh, obtaining a, a .gov status. And um, absent any redirection, I will be trying to get a frwmb.gov as the, as the domain name, which is just like our .org, but it says .gov. Uh, I'm just curious more than anything. Um, what does this application process entail? Is there a uh, cost to it? Why is so formal? Uh, it's formal because um, there's a steep criteria to receive a .gov domain. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I, um, I, was, I was even talking to my uh, daughter who uh, about about this project and she said oh yes and all the teachers tell us that the most trusted uh, websites are the .gov websites so um, it's formal because they make sure that anybody getting one of these .gov designations has is is really a person that should have should have that so anybody can obtain um, all the other web designations. But for us to go through the application process, to have somebody look to make sure that we are, in fact, a government and legitimate entity, um, uh, it takes about 30 days, is what my understanding is. 
There is no fee at this time. And uh, they used to charge a monthly fee for uh, .gov designation. At this time, there is no monthly fee for a .gov designation. That is, uh, I mean, of course, I can't guarantee you that that's how it will uh, persist or remain. But um, but when I do embark on this, it is it is formal, um, and so I would be acting um, on behalf of of our group to provide something that is uh, structured and registered with the the federal government um, as a as a government entity. Thank you. Question for the board. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to authorize the water engineer to apply for the .gov extension as soon as possible and keep us updated on the progress as that occurs. And I'm going to get pause for a public comment. But I have a, a motion in a second to uh, Comment period now. We have a tough on to vote on that. But anybody in the audience have a comment? You know, go, go application. I'm going to cut myself there. Anybody online has a comment? Yeah, all staff members online. All right. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. So uh, would you say all in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion two. Thank you, Ethan. Um, Legal updates, Katie Franson, come on down. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the board. Uh, the first item we have on here looks like it's the board funding memorandum. Uh, like the last two memorandums, this uh, memo is before the board for approval of publication onto the website. The latest updates to it from the last time this was reviewed were to account for the governor's line item budget that just recently was published and to also account for uh, application fees that the board receives and how those are utilized. So Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I've got a real picky comment um, on the first paragraph after statutory authority, final sentence says tribe twice tribe. I think maybe it's stylistically, but it should be tribes. It's tribes throughout the rest of the minute. That's it. Okay, that's a good comment. Probably nothing to change the language of this at this point. We can probably hold something. This. Uh, any other comments? Nope. Ethan, you just said uh, the board and the Office of Engineers. You got a chance to let me take a look at this. Do you have any comments or questions? Is there anything we need to do with this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, I'm, I'm okay with it. I did add um, one, one item in here, which was uh, part of the funding for the board and the Office of the Engineer, it comes from application fees, and that was uh, uh, accommodated. So thank you for that. Yeah. Are, are we looking for approval of this then? Acceptance of this? How What is this? Uh, Mr. Chair, board members, uh, yes, I believe that we're at a spot where this would go from, uh, would be finalized and, and um, approved by the board. Then we would post this and along with other public documents that help to define things with um, perhaps this one uh, correction to uh, tribes, unless the board has other changes that they'd like to see. I'm not, I'm not sure, I might say draft that still too. So we need to remove the water mark as well. Um, and then I'm going to ask that uh, Melissa, do you have any information? Um, 
No. I don't think that matters because when we talk about funding, this is both state and tribal. And, you know, I think we want to make sure we hear a bit from both. I remember I looked at the original version of the funding memo, and then I did provide some additional information on the state as well. Um, I don't. I didn't have any problem with the previous version of the memo. Okay, the Who's who's on the state today? I oh, I did I did not review this so the state not. Okay. Do you need to? Do we, do we need to have any? I mean, this is having to do with funding, and so I'm just, I'm just taking the opportunity here to talk it through because it's more, all, all of our funding is from both state and the tribe. We want to make sure that there's, everybody's on the same page. We've already provided uh, information that was used for the other. Um, so it's been, okay. But we have a way to okay. find how, how that information is to be tried. Okay, should there be any reason to revisit this in the future? Please, anyone make sure you bring that to attention. So, yes. All right. So, regarding the state's position on this, we did request additional information from Arnold Wick, and he provided that in an email on November 17th. And that information has been incorporated into this version okay. of it. So, and it's consistent with what's in the memorandum. Okay, thank you both. Thank you, Glad to be with you. Thank you, Haley. So, uh, the board is ready. We can move this. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the memorandum from BKPH for the regarding the board funding and the appropriation with the mod modification from tribes to tribe and it changed from draft to. Final. Okay, motion by Roger. Second. Second by Teresa. All in favor, say aye. 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 Are you going to close? Nope. All in favor? Good. Thank you. Uh, just for one quick clarification about the uh, activity that you just approved. Um, well, Haley, will you be able to make those uh, the minor change to first page and then take the draft off and send send us an update? Yes, uh, similarly to the last memo where we approved it with minor changes, I am able to send that by the end of the day today. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, I believe we're moving on to Twenty-two six twenty hitch logo contract discussion. Who has that? That's with the uh, legal counsel as well. Okay. Yep. Haley, six twenty hitch. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the board. Uh, this item is in regards to approving the board's. Um, approval of the uh, and signage of the six pony hitch logo contract uh, in response to the IP acquisition contract that was approved by the board in the previous meeting between the board and the artist Dan Holland. Uh, the only comment that I would like to make before opening up the discussion is to just check to see if that contract, the acquisitions contract was sent to the artist. Uh, for signature and uh, notarization. Do we know? Um, Mr. Chairman, board members, I, I believe that, um, I think uh, Christy Brooks was gonna send that off, but uh, she's uh, been out this week. So that'd be my understanding. Uh, Board member Pitt, did you you did sign and notarize that your your portion, did, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then you uh, sorry to ask, you gave that back to this office. I, I did. Okay. So I do believe I now know where it is located. So. <laughs> Does that leave us in a position to prove this? Is that what we're looking for? 
I, I don't think that one has to happen before the other okay. necessarily, but um, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I would just like to speak on that real quickly. Um, so, so the reasoning behind that IP acquisitions contract was to enter into this six pony hitch contract with the indemnification clause still in six pony hitches contract. Um, this IP acquisitions contract between the board and the artist was essentially to help us enter into that then contract with the logo company, logo design company. Um, I would hesitate entering into the six pony hitch contract without first having contact with the artist. Um, if there has been no contact or word with the artist, um, that would raise an issue. The intent was to send it. It was signed. We don't know yet whether it was sent and whether they have it. And we certainly don't know if they have it back. So is there an option here for us to prove this pending finalization of that? And should it not be finalized, then we hold off on completing this contract until such time. Uh, that's just a question for board member and for you. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I kind of agree with Bailey. This indemnification clause is very, very strong. Yeah. And I not want to run afoul of it because we okay. did do Any changes. reasons to rush that? Uh, uh, not that I know of. You may be changing your uh, Nope, just trying to. I, I got some, uh, some encouragement to do what I could to uh, move the okay. logo project along. So I just try to keep uh, pushing pieces around. Okay. But, uh, and, and now I know that I need to track down, I guess, the um, your notarized portion, which I if we can confirm that for next meeting and we're ready to approve this and do it. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, yes. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Chairman, members of the board, I, I might be confused. Are you suggesting that you approve it now? I am uh, contingent on oh, okay. I'm oh, suggesting yep. it, but I think we clarified it. Okay, um, I would just like to let you know that the lack of a logo is holding up the design work on the website. Um, it's a pretty significant piece in the website. It would also be helpful for the work on issuing certificates for water rights. And um, I believe that we're suggesting that the next meeting be held um, the, uh, January 5th. And so if we have to delay again, it will be a significant amount of time instead of just like the two weeks when we would normally have another meeting. And so um, if it is possible, I would I request that the board approve this contract contingent upon the signing of the agreement with the artist um, at this meeting. And then if that can be agreed to with the artist, then we could get this one moving and and make progress on the website. That was my original thought and suggestion. Haley, is any reason we can't do that? I, I have no issue if it were to be contingent upon the signing and notarization from the artist in the IP acquisitions contract, correct? Yeah, I may have not said it very clearly. That was my original suggestion. So um, we have an option. So either we hold off when you've heard the comment on holding off or when we approve contingent on getting the agreement with you. Artist. I support approving it with a contingency. Okay. I see Ben still any motion. I have a comment first. Go ahead. So I on this contract, I guess a couple of things. One is Ken has signed that agreement with the artist. And I think that even you should probably hand deliver that so that you can explain it to the artist and go over it if they have any questions. To just send it in the email or in the, in the mail and they get it. It may take a while for them to act on it too. So I guess I think it would be best that that's kind of a good thing you might do personally. Um, just they may have questions and it help to resolve it and move it ahead quicker. Also, I've noticed on the six point hitch contract that it said that had resolution water management board and has Robert McDonald as the contact. I don't think that would necessarily be there. 
I should be the chairman. So you might want to request a uh, six pony modifier for contact. <clears throat> I, I can uh, make whichever changes you'd like to see happen. And do you want uh, the chairman to be listed as a point of contact, or would you like me to serve as the point of contact? That's fine. You can be the point of contact. Yeah. So. Well, who do we have signed? I think, yeah. I, I, I do believe that the board should still authorize the contract, um, which is separate and different than assigning the point of contact. Again, I will not be making any changes outside of what uh, you're, you're seeking. So, uh, but if you'd like me to help coordinate it um, uh, more, I'm happy to do so. I think on the front page, you have a raw point of contact. Just a little bit. Okay. And then uh so with those exceptions, the board wanna take action on this? Public comment. Yeah. Public comment. Okay. We need public comment on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any public comment from the audience on a six pony hitch contract and what we discussed today? Anybody online? Okay, seeing that in here, and then I'll take a motion. Get ready for it. Mr. Chairman, I would make that motion that we approve the local contract. Contingent upon the artist's signature, and we uh, remove the reference to Robert McDonald and note that the and note that Ethan is is appropriate for the point of contact, but the chairman will sign the contract. Motion by Teresa. Second. By Roger and Ken. You do, Roger. And by Roger. All right, uh, motion and second. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, we're moving along. This one's been a while. And even if, when it's, uh, Confirm with just notify the board by email, please. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, it is three thirty. We have a couple more items to go. Would you like to take a quick break? Yes. Please. We will take five. Take a break. We can be in about five to six minutes. Um, well, that helps me.
Sorry. So, Ethan's up. Order engineer report. Ethan Mace. A number of items here. So, walk us through them, please. The chairman, board members. Uh, this is the fun part of the day, I guess. We can talk about uh, some of your additional and new. Items. First of all, we have requested a water engineer report. So that's what we've got on here. Um, I'm going to give you some updates. Number one, the FAQ. We have, uh, you heard about it a little bit earlier today. Uh, we have finalized the FAQ and we have plans to start rolling that out in a public uh, venue Monday. So uh, that's exciting. You told me to do that. We're about to do that. That FAQ did. Um, enjoy legal counsel's um, uh, review and they made some nice changes to it. So thank you, Haley. <clears throat> thank you, John. Awnings. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. If, All right. I, if I missed them, I'm sorry, but could you have them? No, I have not provided you with the FAQ. I uh, you'll get it on Monday. Okay. What we generally had moving forward from the FAQ is that uh, there was a couple of points to shift around, but then I got the AOK -okay to proceed after we um, got legal review, which um, received those comments this last Friday. So. Um, and, and when when that goes out and is published, you'll you will definitely be on the distribution list. Awnings, <clears throat> I uh, big hand here to uh, Mr. James Frakes for helping us uh, organize and implement the awnings. Thank you, James. Looking good. They look wonderful, I think. So um, that's great. Where do we get it? Uh, installed just this morning. We were worried if they'd still be working on it because it was noisy. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, heater check and electrical upgrades. We did get the heater checked. Um, as you know, we had a few. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the thermostat might be different problem, but uh, that's that's an age old uh, dispute. <laughs> It'll take no, it this. No, we'll take it first. Increase and where that going in the summer. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to add a, a small uh, board member warmer right over here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, the heater is operating <laughs> in normal parameters. I uh, found that out this week. Um, we. Didn't need new filters. I bought new filters and they're in. It's, it's, it's a little bit better. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> um, additionally, um, the landlord has agreed to a couple of electrical upgrades. One, uh, the sump pump will get hard wired instead of being uh, ranged the way it is right now, uh, an outlet screwed into a light bulb, which is not, it's not my preferred choice. Second, um, in this office, or excuse me, in this auditorium, when you flip the switches off for the wall sconces, which by the way, all the wall sconces um, have new LED lights in them. We got that done this morning as well, but uh, uh, that one needs a little love still. And uh, these are off, that's all. But the, when you flip the wall sconces on, off, over in the corner, then all the electrical outlets also turn off. Oh, so phones won't work or computers would shut off and flip. So she's agreed to uh, seek a correction. correction um, other items is on here because originally it said uh, the engineer's desk because I just wanted to tell you I, I got a desk. It's a small cool. win, but an important one. It's upstairs. Oh, cool. <clears throat> um, take a minute, and, and Mr. Franks. Do you have anything to add to our our other category um, uh, besides the things that we know we're going to get into here with the with low voltage and and workstations? I think you covered 
Excellent, excellent, all right. Um, an update on hiring of the water conservation specialist. Um, we are set to do our first round of reviews on the 15th. Uh, there are already around, I think eight, maybe 11 applicants in the hopper. I've been working with AAE uh, to get the initial rankings for those. Um, we had a couple of hiccups in the first publication that went out as a uh, as a remote a full time remote job on Indeed, and so we got that pulled off and fixed. But I am a little nervous that maybe a couple of the earlier applicants thought they were applying for a full time remote uh, job, uh, given that one of them lives in Florida. But we'll find that out. Um, and, uh, and certainly the instructions that the board gave were in my instructions, something happened in the implementation, but we did catch it. Uh, additionally, that um, announcement has been listed on the uh, Enviro U of M group listserv, which goes out to a ton of folks and also AWRA um, pushed it out. Well, uh, let's keep you posted on how things go on the 15th. <clears throat> All right, we have um, before you a an item, a budgetary item that would need uh, board approval today. And in the bigger scheme of things, it does um, you know kind of get into a large, fairly large fiscal. Um, uh <clears throat> commitment to this building so uh if if we're going the wrong direction here i mean what the board to clarify is but uh where we're at right now in this building on our it service is that we have a wireless um, router it's located near the printer and it serves all of the wi-fi connections when we have four people working in here you can see that the traffic slows um, and and, the, and that that server connection uh, over the Wi-Fi is challenged. So uh, a way to handle that um, is to install low voltage wiring in the building so that uh, some computers would have hardline connections, and that also we would provide um, remote uh, APs access points for wireless. And so how that works is you start off with the main trunk line and you can put different Wi-Fi dis distribution uh, pucks around so that um, depending on where you're at, you're getting uh, more, you're spreading the service out. That the quote also includes a, uh, a server rack to handle all the wiring and reorganize uh, things. And so, if you look um, look at these two items that are here, there's a low voltage wiring quote, and then there's a quote for uh, the access points, licensing to run the access points. And then I've also added, um, at least uh, for now, a front door security camera that would be um, outward facing so that anybody who comes and goes will have a, a, we'll, you know, we'll have a recording of, of that activity. And that um, particular security camera would not be uh, tied to our paid for security system. There's a motion sensor that's in here, um, and so we'd have uh, full access to those recordings, and that'd be part of our of our IT um, project. Um, the low voltage wiring quote was five thousand eight hundred and eighty two dollars, and this quote includes. Um, <clears throat> Uh, multiple drop points throughout the building. Uh, let's see, there's a under. If you go to your document that says scope, right here at the top, it's got a little triangle. There is a diagram 
of the building, not to scale, but it does uh, designate uh, that there'd be like here in the auditorium, we'd have two um, wire drops, stuff upstairs, stuff in the main offices. Uh, this includes the security camera. It, it this was developed with my input, uh, and, and this arrangement is based on what I thought. Uh, the office would need for um, a staff of five, generally. That that's um, you know with with pickup folks uh, as you know, as needed. So if, as you're working additionally, this would accommodate that also. I do not have multiple quotes uh, for the wiring. That's something that we can. Um, solicit if needed. That's what the board's direction is. But um, otherwise, this IT upgrade is kind of a fundamental first step to getting offices, uh, office computers, and everything hooked up and operating in a way that you would see a standard office IT infrastructure uh, facility. Well, the wiring is tied to what we need for computers and teleconnected doing multiple computer work. So this uh, the scope here includes a licensed low voltage electrician coming in and doing the wiring, and then also includes Kelly Connect configuring the wireless APs and the commute the the actual computer connections, um, you know, as, as we move into the next phase of Kelly Connect's uh, onboarding process where we get a little bit more direct service from them for, uh, for IT needs. The wiring quote is from Communication resources. Uh, yes, now that, that's a contractor that was um, suggested by. Sorry, I got my papers out of order here. Yeah, Lewis Hayes Communication Resources. And so that's to come in and crawl around under the crawl space downstairs and push the wirings up through the floor on the edges where we would want to see the locations for workstations. Um, also working, there's an attic space above here that um, can be used to run the wiring. And the 5882 is for that? Yes, that's just to get the wiring and a wall mount rack in place. And then the other quote, 24.4, goes to who? That is from Kelly Connect, who would then, uh, as you'll see, and unfortunately, we printed the software and realized it was a big sheet of black, but um, uh, it was a, bit, a busy morning. Uh, but uh, anyway, the uh, when, when you open that up, you can see that this includes uh, the SOHO's APX 320 IEE uh, access points. There's two of those uh, provided here. Um, there's a, a rhombus security camera. And then there's this licensing that's needed enterprise console license, which is a five year license for seven hundred dollars. Um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, I uh, I would be willing to make the motion to approve this expenditure for two different contractors to uh, do the necessary IT upgrades so that the building is capable of supporting five staff as we plan. 
motion by Teresa to approve these. Uh, I just have one question. Contracts, comments, yes. For Ethan right. before. So, Ethan, I see it's spec as CAT 6. Yeah. When we put cable in buildings before, we use CAT 10. Is that a significant difference? Uh, no, I think CAT 6 would be more than sufficient. Um, I would draw the line at CAT 5, but I think that the CAT 6 would be sufficient for this office's needs. Okay. But we, we could also explore uh, uh, wiring variation. And uh, I know some people do, um, you know, the wire that carries light. Um, yeah, I, I think that the wiring, I think both contracts, the amounts are reasonable. I mean, go down in that crawl space and crawl around and punch wires up through here, right? That's a lot of work. One one caveat: I am still awaiting uh, some com communication with the landlord, which this will need to get approved uh, from her. So I wanted wanted to throw that out there as uh, as we we need approval from the board and from the landlord. <laughs> and oh, and um, I'm sorry to otherwise I'd add something else, but I if the board wanted to have camera in here during meetings we can look at that option this quote does not currently um, have that but if you wanted to have some other kind of camera in the building you know this would be the time to decide that we our public meetings are handled here i personally don't have i we talked it over staff talked it over a little bit. Nobody felt like we needed interior um, security cameras. We thought the one on the front door would be sufficient. But I guess this round of uh, ticket that'll be installed at the entrance. Uh, yep. Right in the middle. Is the back door, does that have enough security locks on it? Is that locked? Um, well, uh, we're, I'm going to get a little ahead of you because um, I haven't got a proposal in front of you, but I am planning to get. Um, somebody come out and provide us a quote to convert that to a push bar system with an automatic locking door handle on the outside that allows us to open it. Um, because as of right now, you know, the, it's got a deadbolt. It's just got a deadbolt on it. And the deadbolt itself is just uh, not got a door handle. So you can't, you can't open the door. So yes, it is secure. <laughs> there's, there's no door handle. You can uh, if you walk out and it closes on you automatically. Um, you're walking around. Mr. Chairman, I'll second Teresa's motion. Okay. Uh, I have a motion and a second, and I'll we'll make your telephone public comment. Uh, the other, uh, yeah, the other, the, the question I have is for the board. I you're, you're approving this, but, uh, also means. We don't need to get out of this. The only cool tip, okay. And then uh, your cat six question, uh, do you, you think we need to explore that one? It'd be worth just double checking. So, what would it take double check? So, we need to do another bid? He could, no, he could call Kelly Connect and just find out what the, what the load difference is. Okay, happy, happy to provide that again. And then, uh, I mean, it's just the size of the wire. They like could potentially upgrade the wire without any trouble. Okay. Or the cable. Is there anything changes on that by the time we need to do this? Let us know. Um, and then camera in this room? No. No. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then they have a motion in a second, but do you want to make the motion contingent upon approval by the line? Contingent upon approval by the landlord and with the dollar amount not to exceed eight thousand five hundred. Okay, I need another second. Second. Okay, a motion and a second to approve that. Please. That motion and that uh, second. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. You got it. Thank you, board members. Uh, next up, we have uh, a <clears throat> item to public comment. So I think public comment on that one. I, 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 I forgot to go oh, ahead. Yes. Scroll, scroll oh, there, no. We'll get the public comment. We'll, we'll do that. Go ahead. Go ahead. All okay. right. 
The next uh, item for discussion is our plan for uh, for two work areas in this auditorium. And um, I'm, Mr. Franks, is it going to work out that we can yeah. we can share your screen and and, uh, and show what we have in mind? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a, a to scale representation of this room. And uh, you can see where you're all sitting right in the, there. And those tables are um, to scale for what you see. I'm gonna walk up here in a little bit. And so we think adding some partitions here and here will provide uh, nice workspaces. It will also help tone down the noise in this room because it'd be something to absorb the sound. This does envision kind of blocking this door off. Um, nobody uses that door right now. And so we'd like to, to use that corner instead. Uh, and and uh, so we'll put a, a piece of nice foam covered felt or uh, felt covered foam in the door hole and then uh, we have plans to to use the other side of that door where we can put a cabinet in there for uh, the bathroom which will actually be more practical for our needs here but then that corner will will be one of the work areas this corner will be one of the work areas this um, arrangement imagines that this particular partition can um, move out if needed so that we we have this public uh, meeting arrangement here. There's not a wall sticking out between you and, and the person running the meeting at this uh, more permanent workstation. Um, yeah, make that thing spin around and show them how cool this is. <laughs> nah, anyway. Yeah. We've got an actual podium here, too. Uh, yep, uh, I do believe James <laughs> thinks we need to get a better podium. Uh, <laughs> he's he's brought it up a couple of times, and I see it now on the diagram. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll try to proceed down that route. Um, so on this front, we uh, wanted to provide you with some options, and this is a decision uh, making um, opportunity because you'll see um, under the divider quotes that we have um, two options. Um, and um, Mr. Franks, could you show that picture of the local um, of the local uh, dividers? There's a uh, there's a guy in Missoula that will make the dividers custom for us uh, for two thousand uh, two hundred and fourteen dollars for each um, work area so that's a total of four thousand four hundred and twenty eight dollars or um, we can go with a more uh, traditional variety uh, made by Han you might know you can see the Han it, it, it costs more uh, so uh, we're hoping to James be able to find an example of what the, the Missoula um, folks have, but it's kind of a gray 80s looking fabric wall with a weird splatter pattern on it, and, you know. I you can, can, go ahead. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I just have yeah. one question. So like we have two workstations there and one would be used to- Here or here, yep. To run the meeting the way we're doing, right there. But do we displace somebody when we're meeting? Or I mean, with a workstation in the auditorium, do we displace them from work when we meet? Uh, yeah. Well, generally, when you have a meeting, uh, you are displacing us. It's okay. But I mean, <laughs> well, um, like if you excuse me, you yes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't mean it that way. But I mean, are we? You know. Is the other person who's going to be there, could they be doing something else? And are we making them move to another area during those meetings? I'm just 
thinking about logistics and workforce. Sure. Uh, this does imagine that the two folks that were that are normally in here working will be a little displaced. They will have free use of my office, um, or they will still have the front two offices that are up and functional. So we'll have at least three, maybe four. I intend up in uh, in my office to put a conference table also. So there'll, there'll be options uh, to move around a little bit. In general, um, all of our build out for staff for computers and everything, it all um, is kind of designed to be portable. Uh, we've learned okay. we've learned that from the pandemic that there's an asset to keep computers and workstation uh, options so that you can move move around and, uh, and meet in alternative venues uh, on the fly if needed. But um, um, thanks for the thoughtfulness from the staff in here, but I think they'll be okay. okay. I, I believe this is a reasonable cost of business. I prefer the lesser cost, not to exceed 6,500 for uh, this endeavor described in 5.4, I would make a motion that we allow it to proceed with a cost not to exceed 6,500. Can I make a comment before we move on? That yes. Motion, I'll take your motion. Uh, I just want the board to consider and us to consider that, you know, things like the wiring, you know, got a bid and got that, and that was kind of a special deal, but for these, that did we, when we got this quote, did we consider any local Possible contractors who might be, when I say local, I mean on reservation contractors who might be able to give you a bid for doing those. Um, I'm happy to incorporate anybody else if uh, I, I'm not aware of anybody that provides that service locally. But well, if, I don't know if the board wants to entertain it or not. If you want to move forward, I'm game. If you, I just want to raise that as a, something I'd like us to consider as we continue to spend these dollars. I think, Mr. Chairman, your, your comment is right on. I think that uh, any on reservation business should be considered, and the uh, Indian Preference Office also maintains a list of services and expertise that can always be consulted when doing these things as well. So you um, have a motion. If, if you would, you. if you would like me to withdraw, it's up to you. I'm just throwing this out. Whatever the board wants. And what would you like to do? I'd like to see what we have locally. I mean, really locally, but what I understand really locally is it's almost impossible to get a contractor to do anything in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, I, I, I'm taking this more on the same vein as um, public comments, uh, you know, when I give an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if they're not there, they're not there. People are available and not So, Roger. That's the best job, Brian. I, I concur with uh, Ken and Teresa's comments. I think, though, also this quote for I looked for, for dividers before myself and 2200 for two sets of or for divider set. That's pretty reasonable, I think. I, that's the ballpark that I've researched also. So I that's what they look like right here, just as a, a follow-up. It's kind of a not a very great picture, but it's a great pattern. I guess I would I would uh, second Teresa's motion with the caveat that Ethan do check into it and if you can't find any. But he was in a reasonable time or a competitive cost that would get ahead of us. Okay, and then uh, you want to make your motion? Yes, I would like to uh, make a motion that the project authorized and described in 5.4 proceed with a cost of not to exceed 6500 and that Ethan be authorized to search locally but if an appropriate vendor is not uh, located that he may proceed with the uh, local quote that he has which is determined to be reasonable and timely it's option one option one okay that's the motion second yep. you gotta take public comment goodness excuse me 
Thank you. Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. No, no, thank you. Thank you. So, so that's where we're headed. Any public comment at this point from the audience here or online? We have anybody online? Online, this afternoon. Okay. Any comments? Okay. Seeing none. Hearing none. We have a motion. Roger, is that a second? Yeah. Second by Roger. So, all in favor, say aye. Aye. So that it will based on those conditions. That doesn't include, that didn't include your desks, or did it? <laughs> the 6,500 does include, uh, no, it doesn't. We've got desks I, and I, it looks like, office furniture, so. It looks like separate. maybe I did some bad math here. You need some uh, separate action awards? Yes. Wait, oh, wait, no, I, apologies, hold on, uh, 4,000. 500 plus uh, 1200 plus. No, we're good. We're good. 6,500. Uh, sorry. Made me second guess myself there. <laughs> okay. Yes. We're good. And we got those numbers in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Board member updates. Anybody have anything? I do. Teresa, go for it. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't have an update, but I do have a comment. Go for it. And what um, my comment is, and um, I apologize if I should have said this at the beginning of the meeting when we approved the November 17th minute, but I, um, I would like something addressed in our meeting uh, in regard to the action taken on the 17th about the what we did with Glacier Bank. I believe that the uh, acting superintendent had made a comment about an unfortunate situation he was involved in. And uh, we were proceeding with finalizing our arrangements at the bank, but I feel like it, it might not have been adequately addressed. So um, I think we should have addressed that in terms of a public trust that we have done the right things with Glacier Bank, that we do have the right type of agreement with Glacier Bank and that we do have the necessary sideboards for in terms of who can sign and that we are fiscally responsible in that regard. Okay. I have not been here. I'm only aware that the board did approve that we move forward with the, the uh, three party agreement with Glacier Bank um, that was signed that is in place. Uh, my understanding of that was that we have a certain amount of money that is covered by FDIC in our account. Beyond that amount, it is not covered by FDIC, but the bank itself will cover any amount beyond that. And no risk, no cost to us if we agree that's what the purpose was. So, uh, with regard to what happened last meeting, is there something specific then we need to clarify? Well, I think your I think your uh, comments clarify. I don't know if uh, Roger can have any comments, but later that day, it it occurred to me that maybe we had not explored that enough for offer and so. With your clarification today, I think we are okay. Okay, Roger, did you yeah. have anything on that? No, I think that adequately. I think one, it was no cost to the board, and that it ensures our full value of our account about two hundred and fifty thousand, whatever the FDIC limit was. So it it was a it was a good decision. Okay, Ken. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Teresa. We didn't address the six members' um, experiences, but I'm not real sure it's necessary because what you just said is what, what's my understanding. Too. And I think that should something come to light uh, that deals with that, that uh, that is an issue I would expect the board members or even to bring that forward. Uh, we revisit that if we need to. In the meantime, it's done. 
Yeah. And, okay. and uh, Mr. Chairman, I do yeah. agree that it was a good decision. I have two other comments yes. to make, if, if possible. Uh, my one comment, and I mentioned this to uh, Ethan, is that I would hope at some board meeting we can talk about some sort of administrative guidance related to board member compensation and uniformity. And then the other thing that I wanted to ask about is now that we have that memo from the legal um, advisors, does that memo on funding or statutory authority move us in a positive direction to address uh, direct, director and officers insurance? Can we go back to that at some point at the first of the year? You know, insurance. You think you want to follow up? Yeah, I'm going to, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, board members, I'm going to do my best uh, here to talk about uh, the director and officer um, insurance. Uh, my understanding is that there had been outreach to, um, uh, right? Uh, what? Travel first. first. Thank you. Travel first uh, to see if there was an opportunity to get insurance through that. Um, that that was unsuccessful because the board is not um, over fifty percent uh, tribally owned or operated. Um, I think you parrot right, what I've been told here, so I'm not the expert in this matter. Uh, but uh, so I, I believe that that has been. We've had no resolution towards any kind of uh, director or officer insurance through that avenue. And I also have been roughly explained that, uh, to me that the expense to add that on the, out of the private sector arrangement will be substantial. Okay. Um, and uh, you know that said, maybe we need to pursue looking at that, but. Um, Certainly, compared to our liability insurance, uh, my understanding is that that's going to be quite an expense. Mr. Chairman, comment? Yes. Yes. It is not to, um, I'm not raising the issue to uh, promote uh, large expenditure. No. I'm raising the issue for adequate coverage for us as we do our official duties. <laughs> I also assume that that uh, as long as we are operating within the parameters of our official duties, we are covered in some form. Um, I guess that's a, maybe a question. Uh, th there is a specific reference to this in the compact uh, about um, immunity from suit yes. uh, for board members and uh, the engineer, so long as they're acting within their official capacities. I, I don't know if that resolves your issue or not, but- um, Well, certainly a question, then the question, I guess what comes to my mind, does that mean, what does this mean now moving forward? Do we continue to pursue options or do we drop this? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, board members, I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. And I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm just sort of trying to share with you what I, what information I do have. So I'll continue for sure. I guess I, I have shared Teresa's concerns about this all along. And you know, we've kind of been going along to get everything in place as we go. And now it does seem that it would be an opportunity. So maybe, what we should do is ask our legal counsel for an opinion on the adequacy of, of language in the unitary management ordinance and find out how we stand relative to the demonstration and liability. Um, and then we can proceed forward based on that. Okay. And uh, Rogers told us to clear one. Was that something you think you can follow through with? Absolutely. Okay. Give us some options. Please continue, continue the discussion. Yeah. So I, I guess to follow on with uh, board member comments. I uh, 
I think we've approved a lot of administrative items in the past two sessions. Um, and I know earlier, Chairman Matt requested a flow chart on how we have a path forward from here. And I guess what I'd like to also see is potentially we have an ex executive work session to discuss that and maybe to discuss the same pictures about that product uh, uh, for compensation, for compensation uh, consistency. And uh, maybe we could do that after the January 15th. Question on things like that administrative matter and the board compensation. Um, we just want to make sure we're all on the same page and get it stuck in. Question? Yeah. Go ahead, Haley. Yeah, thank uh, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I just want to address a, a couple things real quick because I was a bit to <laughs> take in. Um, but in regards to insurance, um, it, it is touched a little bit in the funding memorandum um, with regards to the funding agreement between the state, the tribes, and the federal government, um, and the board's responsibility and mandatory obligation to have insurance um, for the board and its employees. So that is discussed um, briefly. Um, however, if it is the board's prerogative, we can delve further into that. I will leave that to the board's discretion. Um, and then also to the conversation of insurance um, and liability coverage will need to be a discussion, um, possibly in an executive session as board member Noble raised, um, well, as we go into drafting the bylaws um, for the board. I plan to have a draft copy of the bylaws by the end of the year for the board. Um, so at the beginning of the new year, it would probably be wise to have an executive session to discuss those matters. Would that put in line, Roger, with your... Yeah, that's you. great. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate your comment. Well, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I have not yet um, filed for any sort of reimbursement of board time. Um, I attended meetings in November and December. Do I need to file for those before the end of the year? Is there a calendar year issue or facing for accounting reasons? So I just I just yeah. don't want to do something that gets us in. You can do, I don't know maybe it's something you don't have an answer for when you can find out. Um Mr. Chair and board members, I actually just have a recommendation. Uh, let's clear the books at the fiscal at, at the year of all uh, incoming charges for board members. If, if that's feasible and possible, I'd like to see that we can start the new year knowing that there's no um, past year expenses. Uh, I do not believe that there is a policy set to that uh, effect at this time. Uh, on the, the timing of, of submissions or anything, but you guys have been running that more than me, actually. So I, I haven't participated in any of the board's um, application of uh, um, submissions for reimbursements or anything today. Well, I think Teresa's question goes to the actual part of just the county and then we do want to take you with that. See if there are any concerns. Should we end up following something like this at the end of the year? But I think even suggestion is that we just really That's get them done for the end of the year so we start the new year fresh. Well, that's doable for each of these two groups. Yes, the county for the 1099s will be the proclamation. So, I'm going to correct, you know, because then you end up getting it in the next year, then you end up getting it next year. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, board members, can I um, can we pin down a date by which submissions will be made? Like how about twentieth? Uh, okay, can we do that, board member. It should be what, ten days. No. If you get close to the 20th and you have a problem, let, let us know what Ethan knows and we can get a look at you. Okay. Okay. Any okay. other comments? Okay. Final public comment of the day. Anybody have any public comment in the audience here? Seeing none, anybody online? Uh, hearing none. Next meeting, we're shooting for January 5. Everybody good at that? Yes. And we're looking at a new person. With that, amongst one place, we call this meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Good meeting. Good work. Thank you. Thank you, board members.